Hello. Um, this is very much um, meant to be a sort of a visual version of, of the article that I wrote um, for the Mediterranean Journal last, last issue. Um, for, for me, as for almost everyone, it's been a year of extremes. Um, we've had crazy temperature um, from the worst snow for, for 10 years to the hottest summer anyone can remember for, well, since 1987. Um, and in that time, um, Sally's illness and, and subsequent death um, has meant that the whole, the whole year has been very strange and, and mar marred by the loss of Sally. But I hope um, in going through this, we can sort of celebrate the beauty of, of the garden throughout the year. So I thought for any new members, it was worth um, showing the photo of Sparaza as it was um, in the 1960s. Um, this is the extraordinary photograph of, of, of what has, that sort of tells the story of what has been achieved. Um, a totally overgrazed landscape with barely a tree. And you can see here the, the line of, of cupressus that have enabled the garden and particularly the terraces at Sparaza to to grow up um, and this was what the terraces were originally a vegetable garden and this is how it looks today well this was actually in, in March this year um, and very much um, a sort of a haven um, of um, Mediterranean plants and I, I think of it very much as a Mediterranean cottage garden um, and the two women that made this a possibility, Jackie Tirrett and Sally Razelu. Jackie and Sally both came to Sparrows at almost exactly the same age. Um, they were both in their early 60s and um, Jackie stayed for 20 years and Sally for nearly 30. So this is what you see when you first come in to Sparrows, the entrance um, with the cowbell. This was taken in October when I first arrived, so it's pretty much my first week in the garden. And then the desert, and this is in April, um, after we'd had to remove the century plants, the agave americana, um, in order um, because they had succumbed to agave snout weevil. And because the garden's organic, sadly, there was nothing we could do about it. But a sign of, of how um, the wild flowers and the annuals um, at Sparosa create such an extraordinary display, um, even when some of the infrastructure and the, the, the architecture of the, the garden has disappeared. So this is the nursery. And I thought we'd go through month by month. Um, when I first arrived in October, um, it hadn't rained for, for many, many months, um, and it was really quite a sad sight of, in comparison with what I'd seen in August. Um, it was very, very dry and we had to wait a long time to actually receive any rain. But what I was amazed at was how the native plants, the Drumia maritima and the Sternbergia lutea, um, they were completely unfazed by um, the drought and produced, the, from, from, from my personal sort of um, perspective, the most astonishing display. Um, Sally kept on telling me that it was terrible in comparison with usual, which actually I now know quite how many bulbs didn't flower last year in comparison with this. But um, to me, I was just blown away by quite how beautiful it all was. Um, so the Drimia Sternbergia. Sorry, Lizzie, I got rid of that. And in doing so, I seem to have done something foul. Oh, <laughs> um, oh no, sorry, something's gone wrong. Sorry, I'm just trying to minimize that so that everybody can see. Here we go. So, um, and this is more of the native geophytes so, um, Prospero autumnale, Narcissus obsoletus, and of course, Cyclamen gracum. And, um, in the absence of rain. It was amazing to me how it was the Atticon flora that created the display across the garden um, when other plants were looking particularly sad. And um, that to me is the essence of what Sparrows are is. And, um, and the reason why Jackie Tirrett um, 
donated the garden to um, the Gulandris for the preservation and conservation of Vatican flora. So November, November is the month of the volcano sunrises, um, where the sun rises directly behind Mount Parati and you get these extraordinary skies. Um, this is the, the reflections in the pools are particularly beautiful from the 12th to the 15th of, of November. But on the 6th of November, we were locked down um, because of coronavirus. And um, I'd been here for two weeks and um, suddenly everything ground to a halt. And Sally and I um, threw ourselves into the garden with uh, great vigor. I did a lot of rose pruning, which is what you can see on, on the left. Um, tackling mermaid, which is one of the original roses that Jackie Tirrett planted. So it's over 50 years old and a little bit daunting, but it's responded incredibly well to um, a pretty ferocious prune and is looking really good at the moment. And um, on the right, you can see Sally um, cleaning irises. Um, and can you actually see Sally? No, you can't. Um, yes. So um, Sally cleaning irises, and this was actually the, the last gardening we were able to do together before she became too ill. But it was an extraordinary job clearing through the Frigana, clearing hundreds of irises, and the results, once it was all done, was, was extraordinary and, and very satisfying. Um, and with the lockdown came the idea to set up an Instagram account. Um, I felt that it was a way that we could tell the stories of the garden and um, share the garden with people all around the world, even though they couldn't come. So Sally and I sat down and she told me one rainy day to do a whole sort of list of ideas and um, we'd work through them together. And she told me the ones she liked and um, we developed those and it started off as a very collaborative thing and then it just sort of gained momentum but it's been a wonderful thing to share the plants and the landscapes and and some special moments of the garden with you all this past year so these are the bulbs that we're currently seeing at the moment um crocus cantillatus uh, colchicum capanii and crocus cartwrightianus studying the whole hillside at the moment and particularly through the the frigana um, in the garden and december was um when the rain finally came so we had to wait until mid-december and when it came it was absolutely biblical um we had 200 milliliters nearly it was 199.5 millimeters of, of rain which is nearly double the 10-year average um, and it was amazing. And this is what happened. It became very, very green overnight almost. And the paper white narcissus that had been sulking all came to the fore and it was amazing. The garden was finally waking up and it was fascinating to see um, as someone new to the garden, what there was and um, all the treasures that were lurking um, in the beds. And Christmas was me and Sally and all the dogs um, good boy Nui, Tom and Pengo, and um, a naughty Christmas swim at the Temple of Poseidon. Um, so this is January now, and you can see the difference um, with the, the rain. Everything was incredibly green um, almost overnight. And um, with January, Sally's illness um, and health deteriorated and um, I became a part-time gardener, part-time carer. And, but it was amazing how much solace the garden still brought both of us. And I would bring plants in to Sally um, so that we could enjoy them together. And this is the Frigana with all the, the Narcissus papyracis um, paper whites. And the hillside completely covered in anemone coronaria and uh, the giant orchid, um, Hemantoglossum um, roberti anum. Um, and this is taken at the top of the garden at the water system. 
February um, saw Vogue Greece come to the garden, um, which was rather extraordinary actually. Um, and it was very interesting to see that how they um, interacted with the garden and what they liked and what they used. Um, the model was an actress and director called Ariane Lebed and the photographer was actually a model called um, Rosanna Giorgio. Um, and it was great fun actually to see and, and Sally loved it. Um, this was the same day. So it was a proper halcyon day with extraordinary blue, blue skies. And this was on Sally's birthday um, on the 6th of February. And so we had birthday cake and birthday flowers. All the things that were flowering and looking best were brought in. Um, and then this happened. So um, a week after that perfect halcyon day, um, we had a huge dump of snow. And I've got to thank Sophie Tebbett for these photos. Um, but it's the worst snow that um, anyone had seen for at least 10 years. And we were lucky because it was soft and fluffy. So it didn't um, flatten the plants. Well, it flattened the plants, but it didn't freeze them. Um, so basically we had very few losses, but as you can see from this photo, the weight on the trees was pretty dreadful and um, the devastation and the, the, to the trees and the pines in particular was pretty awful. Um, so this is the nursery under the snow. Um, this is day one rather than day two when it was only still quite light. But a week later, the Frigana looked like this. So um, extraordinary how quickly it bounced back. Um, and so all the widow irises, iris tuberosa and, and the muscari that carpet the entire space. Um, and on very early on the morning of the 2nd of March, Sally died. And we had the funeral at Sprosa. Um, it was incredibly quiet, which was felt very wrong really, because in normal times, outside of coronavirus, the church would have been full, but actually we were limited to just nine people. But all the flowers came from the garden and the service um, and the coffin were on the south veranda and Wisteria bedecked the whole space and it was very beautiful. Mm. But the garden continued even without Sally and there was a great sadness because it felt like somehow without Sally, the purpose of the garden had gone. But the beauty was undeniable. So the threshing floor and the frigana. So this was completely transformed. Anthemis, chia, silene, poppies, absolutely exquisite. Um, and throughout the whole of the hillside, Asphodels, Anemone Pavanina. Ooh, I'm about to, here we go. And, oh, sorry about that. Um, my all time favorite, the, the bee orchids. So I spent a lot of time when I wasn't gardening, hunting for bee orchids. And this is a selection from the hillside at Sparza. Um, so from the top left, we've got Iracala, um, we've got Mimosa, Tenthredonifera, um, Scolopax, Escalapii, Melenia, and this is a hybrid that I found in the ruins, which I think is probably Mimosa and um, Ferramequinum. Ferramequinum, um, Luteus absolutely sicula, and then this is a white form of Ophrys attica. Um, but just amazing plants and so exciting to see. Um, I mean, I always get very excited seeing ap apifera um, in the UK. So to see the diversity and the number was just mind blowing for me. And April. So the beauty of the garden continued and I was there without volunteers, sadly, because um, restrictions were still in place. But the Circus and the whole garden is just absolutely exquisite. And you could feel Sally in the garden. Uh, 
aloe maculata in the Frigona. And the aloe beds with pitilostrum and chemipuce and the woodland border. And then this is to, to show you the difference, the hillside, it from March through till April and the flow mist completely ablaze. And then 5th of May, the volunteers came back, which was wonderful. Um, and it was just in time, um, sort of week before Monty Don came and filmed in the garden. So apologies for the rather dodgy photograph. It's the only one that was taken on the day. Um, and the cameraman is somewhere behind this rosemary bush. <laughs> and this was also a month of snakes. Um, so these are the four snakes that I have seen in the garden. Um, we've got a Caucasian whip snake, um, European adder, leopard snake, and Dahl's whip snake. And um, this one in the top left must have been over two meters as it ran past me across the terraces. So absolutely amazing things um, and, and very, very beautiful. Um, and the cacti and succulent beds, um, the reason I put this in was that they really did hold up very, very well, even though we were experiencing extremely high temperatures and there'd been so little rain um, from March, really. So the temperature was very high and very, very little rain coming in um, but there was lots and lots of things that were still very beautiful and that were great on camera for, for the film crew um, and the noise of the green toads from the pool was absolutely extraordinary um, and something I don't think I'll ever forget the sort of the noise of, of the green toads and the bats skimming the water in the evening um, and through to June and this was when the heat really kicked in. So we had 40 degree heat in June, July and August. And in early June, it was decided it was getting too hot for volunteers to keep coming. Um, but the beauty of, of the buckwheats and the lavenders um, were completely undeniable. And, and, and with the, the sort of very strong light, um, I think kind of exquisite. This was a hillside covered in wild thyme. Um, this is just outside the garden, but the hillside itself in the garden was also very, very beautiful. With Pendelia in the background. And the irrigated and the Gulandris visit. So all the senior figures from the Gulandris Museum came in June to look at the garden and to see um, what role they could play or would like to play in the future with um, in a partnership with the MGS. And here we have July, again, 40 degree heat and interesting to see what was sort of holding up and the trees really came into their own, um, as did Salvia canariensis and the Agapanthus um, and the succulents and the seed heads of Pitilostum and August was a month of fire. Um, and uh, the garden was covered in ash for most of the month. And um, the, the sort of the um, effect of the light from the fires in Evia and um, Parnitha was really disturbing actually. Um, but again, the contrast between irrigated and unirrigated. Um, it's quite stark really. Um, and then in September, Catamarini um, published a very nice article on the three gardens of Pena, um, us, the Vores Museum, and um, Lefteri Dariotis, um, his gardens in, in the center of Pena. And this, sorry to end on a very boring bar chart, but um, the blue is the rain that we had and the orange is the 10 year average, um, which just goes to show quite how little rain we had last year um, with this enormous spike in December where it was nearly double the average. Um, but it's fascinating and um, there have definitely been, um, there 
there have been losses and there will be more, I think. The Cupressus on the hillside um, are looking particularly sad at the moment. Um, but hopefully um, some of them will pull through. Um, I've had to fell a few already, um, but it creates opportunities. And I think you've got, we've got to look at it as positives and also um, are there plants that we should be trialing if this tendency for extremely hot summers um, becomes actually a trend um, rather than a one-off. So contact information, um, Sparosa visits and my email. And then the two Instagram accounts, Sprosa and me, and then 